Hey guys, what's going on? Tyler Ansman here with Tyler Ansman Performance. So today, we're going to talk about arm action, velocity, and health, and a very specific aspect of the arm action, which is, which is horizontal abduction, or the scap load. Alright, so scap loading is a term that Paul Nyman coined. Alright, basically what it means is that at foot strike, alright, and cocking, where our arm is. So it should be somewhere between uh, behind your head and visible behind your body. All right, so one of the things that we know is at cocking, so when that arm is perpendicular with the ground, the more horizontally abducted we are, the higher velocity we often see. The research kind of shows us this. Um, this makes sense because we know the pec is one of the big accelerators of the arm along with the lat, and that when we put a pre-stretch on it, like we are here, all right? This is basically the principle of the stretch shortening cycle. That following contraction is going to be more power, right? So it makes sense that at that foot strike, we haven't done any of what we haven't shortened our pec at all at that point. It's at its maximal length. That we're going to get a pretty powerful contraction. It's going to pull our arm through and help our arm kind of lay back. All right? So that's why it's important. All right? But more may not be better in an absolute sense. So this means we may see a lot from Jacob DeGrom, right? If you see the still image of him, his arm's very visible from behind his body. He's got a ton, a ton of range of motion there. This may not work as well for somebody like me, for example. And one of the reasons, for, a couple of the reasons for this are anthropometrics, so basically limb length, uh, size of the body, those kinds of things, mobility, and then length tension relationships. So a length tension relationship, basically, every, every muscular tendon unit has this. And basically what it's saying is that within a specific length, this muscle produces optimal force. When we get shorter or longer than that, it doesn't produce as much force. The force isn't maximized. And so the reason for this is because cross bridges aren't maximized. So if we're too short, we're not gonna get maximal overlap. If we're too long, we're also not gonna get maximal overlap. So we're not gonna get the most cross bridges we possibly can, then we're gonna get reduced force from this. So if we think about this in terms of horizontal abduction, if we have a guy who just go about trying to increase his horizontal abduction, we may take him out of his optimal length tension relationship, right? And we're not about just increasing horizontal abduction for the sake of increasing range of motion. What we're trying to do is increase the speed of the arm, right? Through horizontal adduction. So this movement, if we think about the forward portion of a pec fly, okay? So the way we do that is by staying in that optimal length tension relationship. And we can kind of tweak that with our training, all right? But we'll get to that later on. So if we go about changing horizontal abduction without kind of thinking about these length tension relationships and the health of our athlete, we may run into some problems. So one of the reasons is that when we're, when we're getting overhead and we're getting into horizontal abduction, we're getting all these positions, the shoulder has a ton of range of motion, right? And so what we need is we need that scapula, so the shoulder blade, to kind of move with it, and we need the rotator cuff to kind of keep that ball centered on the socket, so the humeral head centered on the glenoid fossa. So if we don't have adequate strength and reactivity through the rotator cuff, and we don't have good range of motion and strength through the scapula and the muscles that surround it, we're gonna run into some problems. All right, so if we think about this in terms of horizontal abduction again, one of the things that could happen is we're getting not true range of motion here. As we go into this horizontally abducted position, that uh, humeral head is gonna kind of pop forward. And so what that does is uh, basically the anterior portion of the shoulder capsule is gonna get stretched a little bit. So they're gonna be taken out of their optimal elastic length for kind of helping to stabilize the shoulder. So if we're really trying to increase this range of motion, and especially through throwing, we have to think about kind of how we're going about this and the potential health implications that go along with this. So we need to kind of make sure we're adequately training the scapular muscles and the rotator cuff muscles to make sure that this kind of, this shoulder movement is staying um, in kind of a healthy way for the, for the athlete. The other thing is, how do we go about increasing this if we decide that we need to and it could be good for this athlete? Well, we can use self myofascial release. That's kind of the first piece. And so while it's not kind of a magic bullet, what it does do is kind of open us up for this opportunity. It gives us a window of opportunity for an adaptation to increase the range of motion. When we're talking about increasing range of motion, we're talking about actively, not passively. So we're talking about mobility versus flexibility. So strength through that end range of motion. So what we do is we pair that self myofascial release with some kind of mobility drill, isometric hold, um, or strength through a full range of motion kind of movement, and then we can kind of increase this over time. So what kind of happens is the self myofascial release gives us an acute increase in range of motion, 
and then we pair that with something where we can kind of improve strength, that end range of motion. So it may be like we do a pec smash, for example, and then we do a prone T, or we do a horizontal abduction uh, band isometric hold, or we do push-ups from plates, or an isometric hold from plates. Something along those lines will kind of allow us to lock that range of motion. The other piece is we can add eccentric training and plyometrics here. So I've written about articles in the past and I'll link this uh, in kind of the notes of this video. But what it can do is it can kind of shift that length tension relationship to longer lengths. And why that's beneficial is we can then get more contribution from the elastic portions. So the tendons, the aponeuroses, um, the elastic portions of the muscle, that kind of thing, where the more it's stretched, the faster rebound effect we're going to get. So if we can shift the muscle lengths longer there, we're going to get a greater stretch in these elastic components, and then we're going to get a more powerful kind of rebound effect. All right? And then we can finally kind of get to the drill pieces here. So one of the drills that I like for this is a split stance drill with the arm at 90 degrees. And what that kind of does is it allows us to kind of feel the arm being pulled through, right? We've kind of talked about in the past, if we're getting a pushy arm action, it gets really elbow flexion extension dominant, rather than getting pulled through and kind of allowing that arm to lay back, all right? So the other drill that I really like is a scap retraction throw. So we have a few different variations of this that we use, but kind of one of the basic variations is start with your palm up, think about kind of driving that elbow back, almost like you're elbowing some guy behind you. Drive the elbow back and then allow that arm action to flip up. Because if we get really shoulder kind of abduction dominant, so driving that elbow up, it becomes really hard to get horizontally abducted because in order to get on time and actually get any layback, we're probably already going to be in a horizontal abduction. Um, so that's kind of how I would go about improving horizontal abduction in athletes. That's why it's an important piece to the arm action. If you're interested in more, check out the articles in the links below um, and check out my site for more information.